we are up against it today. Oh my goodness. Yes, with all the mounting videos I have done in the recent weeks, oh, they were easy. This one is of a different caliber altogether. We have our work cut out for us because I would like to maintain these root tips, but oh my goodness, it's even attached to the tag. So if my hands start shaking mid-video, you will know why. While we still have them, look at these root tips of my supposed Brassavola perinii. Has never bloomed for me, but we're working on it. Look at that. That is just magical. I love it. I want to keep it. I have two new growths coming. They haven't started on their root system yet, so not all is lost, but oh my goodness, I don't want to lose anything. So you can see my mount here has a pocket of hob filter material. I've been studying it. I know I was behind. I was trying to get to this one, but it was also a matter of time with the other ones. <laughs> so here we are. Yeah. We're going to try and get rid of as much of this as we possibly can without destroying what is going on at the far end over there. The mount it's going on is a beautiful piece of cork. It's not going to look aesthetically pleasing, but oh, I'm going to be so thrilled if I can keep my root tips. And for me, that would make a fantastic mount, no matter the visual. So let's start the fiddle. If it is impossible for me to get the tag off, I'm leaving it on. I'll just make a second tag at a later stage. But first of all, I'm going to get off anything that's going to snag and hook anything that I might make a mistake with when moving the mount around <laughs> and my commentary is probably going to be a little bit on the staticky side as I try to talk and do things at the same time so I ask your forgiveness for that in advance we're going to do the easy parts first and get a visual of what we are up against we're going to be cutting off the hob filter material in the back as best as we can to expose what we are up against. Now, as mentioned, I want all those root tips to come out of this procedure viable, alive, functioning. <laughs> They're probably not going to attach because this is already sticking out over the mount I tried. I already looked to see how I would position it so I wouldn't bore you with that too much. But um, yeah, the whole thing here is to bank on the new roots that are going to come from the two new growths. So what we have going on is either a root tip will find its way to the mount or just rely on the brand new roots that are coming to make it to the mount. That's why I'm taking all of this off because I'm going to be leaving some of that white grating on the mount while I attach it to the cork and that would be like my sphagnum moss substitute. And yes, I have this mount bone dry at the moment. I watered her early this morning and I told myself today is the day. Not that I was procrastinating, but yeah, this is not one of my, it's not gonna be one of those mounts where I'm gonna be happy until I say, Hope you have a beautiful day. <laughs> so I'm very apprehensive about all of this. This root might look dead, but it is viable. We'll try and hold on to that. I'm not here to cut off dead roots. I'm trying to see where I'm at with the live ones so that I can get a better intel. See that? right by the tag. All of them are. My Brassavola species aren't the most generous root growers. 
That's why I'm being so fussy about this. I'm sure that some of them will crack when we put the mount onto the cork. Collateral damage is to be expected. As long as it's not root tips. Okay, the major activity is over here. So keep that in mind. While I could cut all of this off, I may just go in and take off a bit of this section right here. I want to be mindful that I'm going to use the grating as the support for when I put in the L hooks. But I think all this at this side can come off all the way to here, right there. Let's double check. This is a branching root right here, so we'll be mindful of that. Going in and out to here. Ending up as the root tip right by the tag. Oh, goody. <laughs> okay. Very slowly expose what we're doing and we cut into a live root. I didn't see that. Okay, well, you can tell that the hob filter material was not a bad media for roots like these. They could manage to get in through and out. My sewing skills weren't that shabby back in the day. <laughs> the hob filter material was well pinned to the plastic. <laughs> Ooh, okay. I think that was the easy part. So I can go in here and take out this section. This root is dead. So we don't have to worry about that. Breathe. Okay. That part is done, I believe, to the best of my ability now to see if I can get this off. If I even want it off. I mean, I would love to get the wire out. I'm telling you, I would love to do that, but not at the expense of a root tip. So after I finished filming this video, I'm going to add a voiceover clip into the process of where I <laughs> was fiddling with the roots and stayed completely quiet. So if you're hearing me right now, it's because yes, the audio is being attached to the current clip that you are seeing. <laughs> I know that this may sound really strange, but I'm preempting the editing process and I'm just gonna cringe at the fact that I was so subdued and the cadence in my voice was a little bit like, Wah! but that is exactly what I'm feeling. I'm feeling, <laughs> so this clip right now, happy day days and cartwheels around the patio. If you're liking the video as you're watching, forgive me for the lack of enthusiasm <laughs> as I'm doing this, but I can assure you that my brain is going 100 miles an hour and I would probably be babbling if I was trying to talk to you through this process right now. <laughs> anyway, back to the original audio. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is not a humorous laugh. I'm not finding anything funny about this. I am so nervous. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but look, I think we managed. Okay, <laughs> let's get the mount. Oh boy. Those of you that have seen me 
mount my other brassavola my well my flagellatus this is supposedly a perini i will know what comes next and everybody else well yes i am leaving all the plastic on and i know aesthetically it looks a little bit unpleasant to say the least i fully agree but it's the roots or aesthetics and i will always 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 vote for roots just make a little bit of a mark where i want one hook and i'm going to try and make sure that my hook actually i only will need two that's the plan because clearly down here i may need to go into this corner but the intention first is to see if just the two will work Look, mom, no hands. <laughs> Child, be careful, <laughs> be careful. Actually, instead of going here, this is a better corner right here. Now that I've gotten to this point and I feel I can breathe easier, this orchid was on the brink of death. I only had a rhizome and in 2020 when I put her on the inorganic mount, I just thought, you know, there's not going to be anything I'm going to lose. The orchid had no needles, nothing at all. Just a rhizome. She was growing four new growths in that year when she was on this inorganic mount. I couldn't believe my eyes. Those are all the little ones you see here. This is what I had when I put her on the mount. Look at all these little growths. They came in 2020 incredible then she started to grow roots i call her my zombie brassavola because it's literally that's what it was i need that a little bit tighter so to still have this orchid borders on a miracle in my opinion i am never ever gonna diss the inorganic mounts it's just now that she's come to this point i would like to make sure that the roots can find somewhere to attach themselves to so if she grows bigger and bigger she's already set out for success there won't be anything where i have to afterwards do even more damage because right now she's little itty bitty bitty <laughs> is this tight enough it's a bit of a loose crevice right here on this one so i'm going to add another one right here there may be some kind of air pocket in the bark. This one, I could just now just press it down with my thumb. So I'm not quite convinced there at all. This is a short L hook, but it's a little bit more thicker, even though it's not as long as the other ones. Short and thick will do as well. And it's going in a lot tighter than the other one did. So that's good. That makes me feel better. Now you're probably saying, yeah, but the aerial roots up there, they're not gonna attach. Probably not. Maybe one or two will think, oh, hello, what's down there? Let's go check it out. But these two new growths right here, yeah, they are going to be growing their own two new roots each. <laughs> Not being a very generous root grower, if I can get two out of each of these growths, that makes four that can attach themselves to the cork pretty quickly. That's not going anywhere. Give her a bit of a shake. Just checking, just checking. Yeah, she's not going anywhere except towards the mount eventually. That's her position in between the pulcra and the tulumnia hoxonia. So my tripod isn't that tall. I'll be right back when she's in her place. <laughs> Woohoo! Afternoon watering on the new mount. Just plain RO water. Just give that a good drenching, put in some humidity onto the cork. If my camera is jiggling, it's because I'm holding the tripod while I'm trying to water the orchid and tell you how grateful I am that this is done, how appreciative I am that you watched this video. Oh, thank you so, so much. <laughs> I know, it looks weird. They all have a little bit of a weirdo, don't they? Here, Phalaenopsis pulcra, Dr. Shivago. <laughs> Doesn't look as weird as this one, though. But as long as the orchid is fine and we didn't compromise a single root tip, ooh, I would consider that result. Thank you so much for watching. I wish you a fabulous day on that one condition though. Please that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.